Hello and welcome to the video on how to test Flash and Flex applications using the Runtime Loader. With Test Complete, you can perform functional testing of Adobe Flex and Flash applications. You can easily simulate user actions on Flex and Flash movies and even access their internal objects, properties, and methods. Now there are several approaches to make these objects accessible. Each of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, if you use the Flex client library, you'll have to recompile your Flex application. If you choose to use the Flash Injector, then you need to use a debug version of the Adobe Flash Player. In this video, I'm going to show you the specifics of using the Runtime Loader option for testing Flash and Flex applications. The Runtime Loader is a helper application that's shipped along with TestComplete. It automatically embeds TestComplete's Flex testing library into a Flex application at runtime, thus making the application's internal objects, properties, and methods accessible to the TestComplete engine. Now this approach has some advantages in comparison with the other approaches. First of all, the runtime loader does not require a Flex application to be compiled in any special way. Second, this approach provides the best possible object identification by TestComplete. And finally, it provides access to native properties of application objects. Let me demonstrate how you can test Flex applications by using the Runtime Loader. In my explanation, I'll use a sample Flex application that's located on a local web server. In order to test a Flex application with the Runtime Loader, you first need to copy the Runtime Loader files to the computer where the tested application resides. You can find the Runtime Loader's files here inside your Test Complete install directory. Just look inside the Open Apps slash Flex slash Runtime Loader folder, and you'll find these three files here. Now the runtime loader.html file is a wrapper web page for the tested application that's going to be run by the loader. These other two modules that you see are used for loading Flex applications. Now these are pre-compiled with TestComplete's Flex testing library. That way, when you run your Flex application with the runtime loader, it automatically embeds TestComplete's Flex testing library into the tested application, thus making its internals accessible to the test engine. This module is used for loading Flex applications compiled for using only local file system resources without network access, while this one is used for loading Flex applications compiled for using network resources. Now since our application is located on a local computer, we need to copy the loader's files to the local server, and it's recommended that you store these files in the same folder as where the tested application's Swift file resides. So here, I've already got IIS set up here, and here's my virtual directory that contains my Swift file. I'm going to just explore that real quick. And you can see here, here's the Swift file that we're going to be testing, and you can see that I've already copied in the runtime loader files into the virtual directory that houses the Swift file. Now we can launch the runtime loader application and run our Flex application. And to do that, I'm going to open the runtime loader HTML file in a browser. So here I've loaded the runtime loader page, and what I'm going to do is specify the URL to the Swift file that's going to be tested. Now because the runtime loader is living in the same folder as the Swift that we want to test, I can just put in the Swift file's name with the extension. So I'm going to type in orders.swift here. Then I'm going to specify the type of resources which the tested application can access. Depending on the selected option, the runtime loader will use either the runtime loader LWN Swift or just the regular runtime loader Swift module for loading the application that will be tested. Because our application was compiled to use network resources, I'm going to make sure that the network option is selected. And then I'm going to click the load Swift file button. And now the runtime loader web page will wrap the tested application Swift into a container that's pre-compiled with TestComplete's Flex library. After that, the tested application automatically becomes open to TestComplete. That is, TestComplete will now recognize the Flex application's objects and be able to access its internal properties and methods. So this application is now ready for testing. So now to ensure that TestComplete has access to the tested application's objects, I'm going to explore the application here inside TestComplete's object browser. So here's the uh, Internet Explorer process that we're working with. And this is the page that corresponds to our Flex site. So I'm going to expand this node right here. And inside this node, we can see the orders object. And then here we see the internal objects of our Flex application. Any internal flex object is going to be marked with this fx glyph right here. So any place you see fx, that means that that is a flex object. 
So now take note of the object hierarchy of the tested application. As you can see, Test Complete ignores web objects that correspond to the Runtime Loader's Flex application and the Child Swift Loader control that actually loads that module. So the Object Browser Panel tree shows only the tree of the application loaded within the Runtime Loader. We don't actually see the Runtime Loader modules themselves. And then over here, in the object properties on the right hand side of the screen you can see all the properties and methods of the selected object so the exposed flex objects contain methods and properties that are common for all uh, tested objects the things like you know whether it's enabled if it exists if it's visible those kinds of things but test complete also adds this special flex object property which provides access to all the underlying flex objects and methods that are available uh, for that particular control so we've demonstrated how you can explore a flex application in the object browser and now what we're going to do is create a new test complete project define a tested flex application and record a test against this application so the first thing we're going to do is create a new project and I'm just going to click this create new project button right on the start page here and that brings up the create new project wizard so let's go ahead we'll give a more descriptive name to our project I'll call this the runtime loader project and then we'll click next now we can define a tested application and first thing we need to do is define that applications type so since we're testing a flex application I'm going to choose web now we need to specify the type of web test that we're going to perform I'm going to select functional testing of web pages and this next page lets us configure a list of web pages that will be tested in our project so to add our flex application to this list what we need to do is click the add button and we can specify a name that will be used to refer to our flex application I'm just gonna call it my flex app I can choose whichever browser I want to do my testing with in this case I'm gonna use the 32-bit version of IE and then I need to specify the URL of the tested application because we're using the runtime loader we need to specify the URL that links to our application when it's opened by the runtime loader so the easiest way to get that is just come in here and I'm gonna copy the URL out of that earlier browser window and I'm gonna paste it inside this URL field last thing I want to do is make sure this auto run checkbox is selected that means that when we start the recording process test complete will automatically invoke our browser out to that target URL alright so now we'll click next I'm going to keep the default settings inside the test visualizer and on the last page of the wizard we can choose what scripting language will be used in our project I'm gonna use JScript and there we go now our project has been created and you can see right here our flex app has been added to the list of tested applications okay so now I'm gonna start recording a test so I'm gonna click the record new test button here on the toolbar once the recording process starts, Test Complete automatically fires off my browser and opens my Flex application in the runtime loader. You can see right here the URL we've specified contains the path to the runtime loader. So now I'm going to perform some actions on my application. So let's modify uh, one of our orders here. I'm going to select John Smith and then I'm going to click this Edit Order button. And let's make some modifications to this order. Let's say that John Smith actually wanted uh, the screensaver product. And let's say that John Smith actually wanted, oh, I don't know, 50 of those items there. And you'll notice that when we add a value of 50, this discount field has automatically populated to a value of 10%. So we want to verify that that discount field was populated successfully. So to do that, I'm going to create a property checkpoint. And this brings up the property checkpoint wizard. I'm going to drag this finder tool right over the discount field there. You can see it's got a red highlight drawn around it. So I'm going to release the mouse. Test complete has selected the object. We can see it right here. I'm going to click next. And now I can select the property that I want to verify for that particular object. And to determine the text displayed in the total field, I'm going to use the public property of the underlying flex control. And, and because the application is compiled with a flex client library, we can access all the native properties of the objects in this application. So first thing you want to do is make sure that the advanced view mode is selected and then scroll down until you find the flex object property. Click the ellipses here. And I'm going to scroll through this list of properties until I find the text property. There it is, 10%. So I've got that selected. 
and I'll click Next. This final screen is just a summary of what the checkpoint is going to do, so now I'm going to click Finish. You see that Test Complete throws a message up here saying that a checkpoint has been created and added to our test. So now I'm going to close out of the Edit Order dialog. Then I'm going to close the browser down. And finally, we'll stop recording. Now Test Complete is going to take a few moments and generate the commands. Here they are. And as you can see, Test Complete successfully recognized all the controls inside our application. And so what we can do now is run this test to make sure that it's played back successfully. So I'm just going to click on this Run Test button. OK, so I've fast forwarded a bit. You can see that after the test is over, Test Complete is displaying the test results in the test log panel, which you can see right here on the right portion of my screen. This panel provides us with detailed information about all the actions that were simulated. For example, this first message here is telling us that the application was successfully launched. Uh, this message right here says that we clicked on John Smith. You also see that we've got images that are being logged here, both what it looked like at record time and at playback time, so we know exactly what transpired during the course of the test run. And then you can see here that the log items panel is telling us the test ran successfully, as denoted by the green check mark. And this information panel down here gives us some more information, like the total number of errors and warnings that were encountered. In this case, both of those are equal to zero, so this test passed.